Hey everybody, welcome to Field of Dreams on NCBN TT. I'm Steve David and I'm your host. Today I talk football with my good old friend, Anthony Clark. Welcome to set, Anthony. It's always a pleasure to be here, Steve. Thank you for inviting me again. I want, wanted to talk to you on building or give, give suggestions on building a new TTFA. So we, knew who, we know who the president is, and going forward, we don't know anything about who is, who is going to join this team other than his slate, right? Um, and there's a lot more to that than, than that meets the eye. So I want your in, input on who or how we're going to build TTFA and to have the best personnel to run this um, association. So I, I want to start with, um, well, I want to give you a chance to, to comment on or anything that I you think that we need to But Steve, kick off um, in the first stage, I am not fortunate. To, I was not fortunate enough to see the manifestos of the both individuals who campaigned for president. And um, I don't know if you did. Did you see any manifesto? No, but I, 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 they said it to me. I didn't read everything in it, but I'm saying forget that. What is in your mind you think? No, no, no. Well, right, why I'm, right, why I'm saying that is because mm -hmm. the person was elected based on what he said he was going to do. Right. right and 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 basically, I would have liked to have yeah. you know a a a, a, a idea. back a idea of that, then I would have been able then to comment on what he said he was going to do, and if that was the right approach on mm -hmm. doing it right mm -hmm. but right in um let's look at personnel yeah um well, I think he has the wrong personnel as his vice president to start with um I don't think um either of those gentlemen can. Um, add any value to write the modern day game of football. Neither Colin or Osmond Dowler. That's my honest opinion. So I'm hoping that um, in terms of all the other committees that he has to form, his technical committee, all the other committees, he would have better advisors in terms of um, uh, the way to move forward. I am um, I, 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 I was, I'm hopeful that um, they have a plan on how to lift football back up. I'm hopeful that they have a plan. We have a World Cup coming up in what, two years? I hope, I'm hopeful that they have a very aggressive um, plan for the national senior team to go and play a lot of international games to get prepared for that tournament, I'm just in a hopeful stage right now. But, but okay, you said you don't think his support with those two guys that you call is good. Who you think would be good to support him? Um, I've always, right on this show, I've always emphasized that we need people at the helm who are good administrators and good administrators in different aspects of administration. So football is, uh, 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 um, uh, it is largely human resource. So I would have wanted somebody who could been an expert or experienced or qualified in the human resource management uh, to be on the right association. I would have wanted somebody who is strong in finance because right our issue is always about funding to be part of the 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 um it's right like right any leadership team. Mm -hmm. I would have wanted um, somebody who is maybe legal to be inside there. So therefore you have a, a, a all round team at the table that will be able to guide the president. I don't expect the president to be the smartest person, um, right, on his team, right? As a matter of fact, 
I hope that everybody else is smarter than the president to give him proper advice. So therefore, when he has to make his decision, he has to be a good administrator, right? A good and right, take the advice and then be able to implement proper strategies and so on. So uh, I, I don't see what type of, um, I, I don't <clears throat> see that quality of individuals around him at present. I'm hoping that, right, he, right, he may be going out to get that on a consultancy basis and yes, well then, but how does the sort of, of, of advice he need? Because football is heavily human resources. But I'm glad you're saying that because that's what I want to talk about. Is what, you, what we think or you think is supporting cast should be. I mean, this is the time for him to build that. Yeah, so... It could be with anybody. If it was part and parcel of his core group, his elected group, mm -hmm. then he wouldn't have to go out and pay for it. Okay. But now, but now he has to go and hire consultants to give him this right, mm -hmm. this sort of advice, or right, to give the team this mm -hmm. sort of advice. Um, right, football is also right. Most people don't see it, but right, football and planning of football organization committees and so on, that is heavily project based. So you need somebody who is experienced in project management. To, to, to deal with these sort of things. So he needs all of those uh, aspects um, to be included in his decision making. So, so let me give you an, a thing. General Secretary is very important. Yes. How, if you have a name, yes, and if you don't, what kind of person you think should we have for that position? The General Secretary must be qualified in sports administration. Mm -hmm. They must have a degree in sports administration. And if they don't have a degree in sports administration, this thing is going to fail. Because that is what the General Secretary is all about, administering the day-to-day -day activities of football in Trinidad and Tobago. Football in Trinidad and Tobago is sport. So that is why you have experts and you have qualifications in sport administration. So I am hopeful that they choose um, right somebody who is excellent in sports administration. I would have called Kamara David, but Kamara David is right with the happy. CFU. Yeah. All right, he's happy where he is. Mm -hmm. And um, he is at a higher right level than the TTFA secretary. But that type of calibre is what we need to be in the sports administration role for the uh, secretary of the TTFA. So I'm anxiously awaiting right, the announcement of the secretary. So off the top of your head, I mean, you don't have like, like any individual that you think could, could fit that role? I'm, I'm right, I'm not. Right, the only person that I, I, I knew, I know Justin Latapi, right, was there before. I don't know his qualifications mm -hmm. in terms of that. But um, he did a pretty good job when he was there. But uh, again, if he's not qualified, if he's not a qualified sports administrator, then no. Um, what about Phillips? Lincoln's son. Um, I don't know his qualification. I think okay. he was more marketing mm -hmm. than sports administration. Marketing personnel um, tend to go based on what I've read in the newspaper. He, he wanted a percentage of everything he brought in and all that type of thing. Those are the wrong motives to be, be, be the, you know, the secretary of the Football Association. It's a job. You have to focus on sports administration. That's what you're supposed to be focusing on. So but you can get, you, you, you can, I mean, the other side who ran against him have people. And, so you can get people from there. And if it is that I would love to see that. I would love to see that the, it, it wasn't a, a slash and, and, and right. right, there's my slate and you lost. So mm -hmm. I hope he incorporates right the other um, slate because they were extremely qualified personnel. Um, so I hope that they are also included in the administration of football because at the end of the day, both teams have Trinidad's football's interests at heart. So 
why you should grab from them the um, right what you can right from that slate. So I hope that um, right, right he utilizes Colin Wharf in whatever capacity, uh, either as technical or otherwise. I don't. Well, know. what about the general secretary for Colin? I don't think Colin, Colin is a general administrator mm -hmm. versus a sports administrator. I'm, I'm holding firm to my advice that the general secretary should be a sports administrative professional, qualified in sports administration with a degree in sports administration. So I, I'm holding firm. That's my view on who the general secretary, that's the qualifications of what a general secretary should have. Uh, well, in my my estimation, I think I would look for a general secretary to be a strong administrator who who can people can work under and who can carry on good bring an office together to to fulfill all the different roles and stuff and to be able to deal with money. Well, no, you have your finance manager in the TTFA to deal with the money aspect of it. That's why, in exactly what you explained there, just think on top of that, they have training, professional training, in sports administration. So it's not that they're a, a, a good administrator that could have people under them working and so on. They have all this right psychology behind what sports administration should be. But the this, this general secretary is the one that spends the money. No, the general secretary will make right suggestions. It will still be the president and the board mm -hmm. to, 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 to decide um, right, what, right where the finances I should go. And it's only the approved budgets that would allow the general secretary to spend. Right. He doesn't make that decision in terms of what to spend and where to spend and, and so on. Um, in the past, you're thinking about a past, um, well, no, none of the past administrators, right? Just remember that, right, Mr. Jack Warner was never, right, the general secretary. Before you yeah, guys, he, he, yeah. yeah, he was at one point in time. Right. All right, but he was always, what, the president? Or he was the general secretary? Se secretary. Right, okay. Yeah. But, uh, right, in those days, he was the general secretary as well as... <laughs> he controlled everything. No, no. You talking about when he was the advisor to TTFA? I talking about prior when he worked actually worked under Eric right. James he was the general secretary, yeah. correct? And Oliver Camps and those guys right. were the president. Yeah. yeah, but but it right. It was a different. How does not the structure? The structure of the TTFA is the president and his um, overarching team. They make the decisions and they give. Instructions to the general secretary, including who to pay? spending, who to pay, what to do. Um, do not consider what happened during the Jack Warner time as the norm. That was not the norm. The general secretary, at that point in time, it seemed like the general secretary controlled everybody. Mm -hmm. But that's not how right the organization is. Okay, so so you you don't have a person that you think would fit that spot the best for him. Because I don't have a person, but yeah. I have what qualifications are required require, for the, the right, right that position. Okay. Um, the next thing, our national team, obviously, is the biggest piece of that pie, right? So, I mean, looking at what we got now, what changes would you make? I don't think the national team should be the biggest piece of that pie. I think um, the we have a World Cup to prepare for that we have a very good chance of making. Mm -hmm. I think some effort should be put there. But um, I believe development is where the biggest pie should be. The, the, the biggest share of the pie should be directed to. So the development is to get to the national level. That's where we make our money. Yeah, That's development to get there and consistently stay there. Right. Not just right to get there and to perform. <clears throat> okay. Right? You want to get to the World Cup every time and you're out in the first round. No, I think we have to ensure 
build the right football, have also a continuation plan. Right. And right from there, we would actually have a good, strong system that will always produce. And we will now become um, competitors in the CONCACAF region of making the World Cup mm -hmm. and not be always looking for the fourth place. So, okay, so let's build the structure. Let's build it from what you think we have to start building to get it to the best production that we will ever have. Um, if, right, if we have to do that, Steve, mm -hmm. I always go back to the time of our under-16 team. When we, our under-16 team, where it has Atapi, just above us had the Leonson Lewis's and the Kerry Jameson, just below us had the Dwight Yorks and so on. That group took Trinidad and Tobago football from 1989 to 2007. And if we had a consistent development program, we would have continued being at that level all the time. But the then administration rode that wave from 89 straight to 2007. I heard you say that before, but I'll tell you what. I want to get involved in, with you on that. And so let's take a break. When we come back, we will pick up right there um, with that group of guys you're talking about who took Trinidad all the way to whatever, whatever. We talk about it right, right when we get back. Viewers will be right back after the short break. Change TV to the sound, we better stay calm, be cool. Wednesday at 8 p.m. on NCBN TT Television Network. Hi, I am Nigel. Quote me today is your daily motivational segment. To start your day right, join me Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. right here on NCBN. Remember, Wake up with a smile. Today is your day. Hi, I am Nigel Kutie. Hi, I'm Jova Paulette. We are coming to a community near you. We're going to speak community, community talk. We want to hear your issues, your concerns, or what will improve your community. Look out for us. We'll be coming soon, Nigel and myself, to your community to hear in whatever way we can do to improve your environment, be it employment, infrastructure, anything to improve your living as well as our own. Community talk, coming soon.
Okay, welcome back, viewers. Uh, for the ones now tuning in, you're looking at Field of Dreams on NCBNTT. I'm Steve David, the host. My guest this today is Anthony Clark, and we're talking about building a new TTFA. And uh, so, Anthony, before the break, you mentioned uh, that group that you thought was big the core that carry our football for a, a decade or a couple of decades, which is true. And I said to you, well, I think I know an era, and uh, that is the Dumbazil era that, that uh, changed football or the culture or the, the expectation. Expectation in football. And, and I still believe that because it's just that it wasn't held to the standard to take it up to that era that you're talking about. So let's... let's I totally agree with you, that. Steve. That was an era of excellence. Mm -hmm. But um, after that, we had writer slump again. But why I keep focusing on right my era is because at that time, we had a president that was in FIFA. We had Jack Warner who was there. Mm -hmm. And uh, the money in football in my era was a totally different type of money that was mm -hmm. involved in football and in your era. So FIFA at that time had um, all types right of funding. They gave you funding for development. They gave you funding for this. They gave you funding to operate. In your time, we didn't have that, mm -hmm. right? And that is why I'm saying that in my time, there was the opportunity to do that, but the money didn't go where it was supposed to go, mm -hmm. right? And the money went into building, a, 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 um, right, a fortune for, right, one person. So we had the opportunity. And if, if I could expatiate on the type of individual during that year that, Took us, you're talking about the group above us, which was the under 19s, were the Kerry Jamesons, the Hudson Charles, the Leon St. Louis's, that group. Mm -hmm. um, our group was the Latter P, the Clint Marcells, the Colin Rocks, the Louis Castillos, the Colin Osborns, myself, Ross Russell, Shaka, mm -hmm. right? The group below us, you had the Dwight York, the Angus Eve, the Arnold Dwarkers. That group of players there during that section that we were, what, four or five years apart, that took football to our 2007 World Cup qualification mm -hmm. process. And it was a perfect platform to continue developing people mm -hmm. because we could have started then now at under AIDS and continue a developmental program where... We saw that that group had success. The Dwight York team even qualified for a World Cup. In, in, in Portugal, I think it was, right? They actually qualified for a youth World Cup. Yeah, it wasn't wanted... like the one that was here where it was held here and we qualified here. They qualified for the World Cup out of, right, out of CONCACAF. And if you had that group of people qualifying, that group should have done automatically gone to the right at the next level. And that's how the Europeans and the Americans and so do it. And you can track a person's career from youth level to the, the U19 level and then the senior level. But we allowed that team to dissipate. Right? Jaron Nixon's. I didn't even call Jaron Nixon. Mm. Right, the Jerry Nixons and so on was that group that made that World Cup. But that was not national. When I say national, head, senior big team, team. Right. senior team, it was at youth level. Right, but listen to this team. Mm -hmm. Our youth team at under 16 used to defeat the then national senior team. Right? That team at that age used to contest. So in terms of the level of football that was being played, although it wasn't the senior team with the older players, 
the quality of football that was being played, the senior team could have never beaten us. Well, why isn't some of those players not on the senior team? We had a couple of those players. And at that time, you had old thinking. You had Russell. You had Leonson Lewis. You had Marvin Faustin, um, who were going to training. And I was one of the things. I was also on the senior team training as well. I was um, right the second string goalkeeper to Michael Maurice at that time. You also had um, a Yankee, Errol, Errol, right? Errol Lovell, I think it is. And we were training with the team. But we always had the backward mentality of, right here, time will come. Even though we were playing at the level. It's no different to uh, what happened to Brian Lara. When Brian Lara was at the top of his game and they always <clears> kept <throat> telling him, Ray, your time will come. When he could have been in there with the Vivian Richards and the Clive Lloyds and so on at a 17-year-old. Don't worry, Ray, you're young, your time will come. Uh, even though he was performing at that level. And it was the same thing. It's a Caribbean mentality that, 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 uh, that quantified age as a right as a criteria to being on the senior team. When Rooney played for England at 17 years old or at 16 plus right years old, right Russell Atapi could have walked on to any senior team at his age at 16 years old, but I didn't give him the opportunity. Before our time, Dole Griffith played at 16 or 17 for the national team. Then Warren Archibald, Leroy Dillian, Dick Fulong, Everett Cummins, they all were a national team in school, in college. Right. And that could have even continued a long time, but it didn't. And, and I'm telling you, I remember at, at one point in time, our U16 team played the national senior team. Vernon Bain, I think, was the coach of the senior team at the time, if mm -hmm. right to correct. And every time we played them a practice game, we won. And you could have, and every time players got dropped, but yet we weren't placed on the senior team. So, coming back to the core question, we have to start a proper development program to be sustainable in football, in world football, right? Especially after we saw what happened in that last World Cup, where the big teams got beaten by mediocre teams, Korea and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and um, right, Morocco, and those teams beat Argentina and Germany and all those sort of things. Because football is now global. So you're not happy with what's going on now? Now? We have on the 14, what we call the, the what? Do you have a name for it? Um, you know, we have on Some next generation, some kind but, of thing. Okay, not, they know they have another name for it. There's something. Anyhow, we, we sh on the 14, on the 15, on the 16, they have, on, they have under everything going on. And that right is now. where the finances should be focused. Not mm -hmm. on trying to make a World Cup every year. And then if we do make it that year, we're not making it the next year because we do have a right a quality continuation program, right? Uh, so that is why I'm saying, let us prepare. And I always use the example of England when they got kicked out of the World Cup. It took them eight years, and they are a team that is expected to be in the World Cup every year. It took England eight years before they built, before they qualified for another World Cup. So it took their preparation of building that team because they never wanted that to happen again, that they were out of a World Cup. And you saw the, the, the transition now that England has now, you know, again, be right are there as a world force in football. Well, um, so it shouldn't, our expectation of every year we should be in the World Cup and we do have a quality continuing program is absurd. So do you think we should have a national academy uh, for football and take people through this? And then as they develop, 
you, you know, you bring new players and it's, it's like a, you're feeding all the different ages. That is what it right should be. I thought we had that now, though. Well, we have the infrastructure for it now, uh, thanks to David John Williams, because prior to that, with all the mm -hmm. money that passed through this country with football, football didn't own even a corner office on Duncan Street. We always rented from, right, a past president of football, and he got all the rent money and everything else. Okay. So we now have the infrastructure for doing something like that with the home of football. So, um, so, and the only part of that I don't like is the coach selections. And uh, why, I, I don't know. I mean, it's, to me, our coach selection is all about who is my partner. And I, buddies. I agree with that. And, 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 and we don't have a selection committee Correct. who would select people the right way to take this forward. And right, and I totally agree. I, I mean, even in the David John Williams time, I was a, a, a campaigner for Angus Eve at that time to be given one of the youth programs because at that time he was a at Prima College, winning everything at the college level. And the people that he would beat, right, that, you know, his team was <laughs> beaten, they were the national coaches versus him being a national coach. So there must be some criteria for right selecting, right, a national coach. And it must be documented and followed. Uh, if it is, it has to do with your present right record, <clears throat> your qualifications, some balance of all those things, right? Your, your, right, your current right record as a coach at, 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 at youth level, at school level, or whatever it is, and um, as well as your qualifications. And there's right, some balance in terms of ranking. So let me ask you then, do you think Angus is coaching at the right level that he should be, or should he be in a more youth level instead of the national team? Is that a little bit too much for him? No, I think at this time, based on his results, mm -hmm. I think that um, he has matured to that level now. And mm -hmm. right, what, mm -hmm. um, uh, right, a key thing was that the players mm -hmm. that were going into the national team at the time that he came on board mm -hmm. were the players that he helped develop. Right. So it was a kind of right uh, homecoming <laughs> with the players that I developed back here. Um, so I think he is the right man for the right job at this point in time. Um, I I feel sorry for him in terms of the the the, the players that have to feed into him. He is right. We are still heavily dependent on right a foreign contingent, and no national coach can prepare a team based on eighty percent foreign contingent because you're not training with them every day. You can't plan anything tactically right with them or anything like that. Your nucleus of your national team should be local, with inputs from foreign players, except if you're playing at totally high right level as right at the Messi's and so on and right your football IQ is right at that level that you can flow into any team and, and be there. We are not at that level. So we have to practice our tactics and all that type of thing. Our foreign players coming back are not at that level. And our foreign players coming back um, don't perform at that level. As a matter of our foreign players coming back, some of them not even on their first teams where they are. So they're not even having playtime. So um, he is already the right man for the right job at this time. But um, I think the money should go into developing a strong foundation for our football. That's where I think it should go. Well, I mean, so... The youth program should have the better coaches. Okay. I would so, I would subscribe to that. So if Angus is one of those, would you not put him in in that and get like an experienced foreign coach or something? 
Well, no, I, I, I don't think we should have that spend on a foreign coach. I think we need to mm. have a style of play. We need to have a national debate on what is our way of playing. And right, the national coach can go down to all those teams and help them formulate the, the, right, the training sessions with the technical committee, of course, on how it's Trinidad and Tobago's style of play. And all the teams coming up should. I like how you get into that. So let's get onto that. Style of play. What do you think should be our style of play? And who can get us to that? It, consistent um, in all the age, different age groups. Well, first and foremost, I, I, I'm hoping that the right people are, are, are on the technical committee as well. I think it starts with having a strong technical committee. Mm -hmm. um, I think it starts with a conversation with um, all the key stakeholders, um, experience and otherwise, in terms of what is required, um, the technical level that is required, and um, then that discussion will come out with what is the best style of play based on our character, our lifestyle, and so on. These things will determine what should be our style of play. Okay, um, we're going to take a break, but when we come back, I want you to tell me what you think is our best style of play, and when have we played in that form or fashion, yeah. and, and, and it worked, or yeah. make it work. Viewers will be right back after this short break. Wednesday at 8 p.m. on NCBN TT Television Network. Hi, I am Nigel. Quote me today is your daily motivational segment. To start your day right, join me Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. right here on NCBN. Remember, Wake up no with a smile. Today is your day. We could say chain. That's why when we fed it, we just bed that when we jam in. We did jam down when we drinking. Man is strong from a pop my bottle right now. When we fed it, we just bed that when we jam in. We did jam down when we drinking. Man is strong from a pop my bottle. Push up your hand.
this as well. Welcome back viewers. Clarky, uh, I was going to talk about, we, I said we were going to talk about a style of play. Um, so I'm going to put you through that because it's always based on what you have. Correct. The type of player you have. Correct. So you don't skip that. So let's talk about uh, the leagues that we have running, like colleges league or uh, the TTFA Premier League. We have the professional league on standby or whatever that is. How you address that with in how football is run in in this country? Um, I have always um, felt that first and foremost, the colleges league should be under the auspices of the Trinidad and Tobago Football Association. Mm -hmm. The colleges league is a uh, uh, they run their own thing and they don't mm -hmm. have I, I don't think they have standards of the qualification of coaches to run their league right to um, right run their teams and all that type of thing so and you have to understand that that is the age that players should be on our national team 16 17 18 years old. I think our players develop way too late. Mm -hmm. Players now going on a national team at 23, they're not mature enough and the colleges league doesn't want them to play in club football during that period of time. That's where they will get their manhood from playing in zonal football and so on. So I think the colleges league is hampering the development of our young players. If you look at the successful leagues and the countries, at that age, those players are already assigned to a club and already in some sort of um, right reserve professional team, for want of right a better explanation. And you will see then the Rain Roonies <clears> and so on coming out at 16 and some of them coming out on 17 and 18 playing professional football at that age. Not coming out of a college team at that age. So I think colleges leagues should be scrapped. And it, right, it should be, or if not scrapped, um, have it as more of a development league versus anything else. And the players should be assigned to clubs. Um, I remember at my age, um, we with a right were a club called Juniors at that age, and we were being developed right in the South Zone. And at twelve and thirteen, we were playing with big men right at that level, right, and at that time. And you will develop a lot quicker then. So we came up through the youth ranks of juniors, the under 8s, the under 9s, the under 12. Right at under 12, you also were playing inter-zone football, north versus south, east versus west, and so on. Colleges League has taken all that away, right? We didn't, Colleges League was there, um, but it never stopped you from playing right for your clubs and zonal football and so on. No, I don't think College League stopped, um, took that away. Um, is that our system doesn't incorporate. I say that to say, if you have, just like you said, they should have zone footballs and north, south, and east versus west and all that. Um, so you bring back the multiple leagues, the Postman League, the SFL, the SFA, Correct. the uh, Central League, and then they play interleague. Correct. And interleague football is how college league will get to play with the big guys. Correct. Because that league plays into the interleague. Correct. And then and so so that structure needs to come back at the Correct. Right. So that's what and I'm right, I'm, I'm pretty saying. Because yeah. as well as in terms of the pool <clears throat> of players that you get, 
when you have that structure, Steve, which we have talked about, right, numerous times, when you have that structure and you mm -hmm. now pull the best from South Zone and the best from the East Zone, you are now able, the national coach has a, a, a wider pool of players to pull from. And mm -hmm. you will continue, right, you'll be able to get the Alfreds from Miaro and right, the Luis Castillos from Miaro again and... You, right, you don't see that again. You, right, you don't see those players coming forth again because those leagues have been crushed because of this right semi-pro, right, Ascension League and the Pro League. And We don't need a Pro League in this country. Why? Because the players from the Pro League don't make the national team. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the foreign-based players continue to come back and they are still at a higher level than what we call our pro league, even though they are not playing in their leagues. Well, our pro league is to supply the rest of the world with players. Well, and... Because they're not... Even that we are not mm -hmm. achieving. Mm -hmm. Because, right, what are the international players we have now, right, in the world? In what leagues? Because our football is dropping. So they Correct. So therefore, <clears throat> we reach that stage where we could supply the work with right the world with players from having zonal football. Mm -hmm. We then decided to go to a pro league. Mm -hmm. That crop of players now went all over the place. We stopped the zonal football that was producing those players, mm -hmm. and then now we have right those players have evaporated. And then we still keep with the pro league, so-called pro league, that is a mediocre standard. Yeah, but to improve our pro league, there was a time it was getting better when W Connection used to bring foreign players in. And they had, I seen, they had one team, I, I used to like how they play. And because they had... Um, but uh, outside players, and they played well, and that would give us a chance to learn, and us a chance to play against better players, and so on. But that crash, of course. So I mean, something like that, either like a Caribbean League, Pro League, and uh, or something like that. We have a team from different parts of the Caribbean playing in. You see, right, Steve, the culture of Caribbean football is community. Mm -hmm. And we have, at the end of the day, football is a business. And at the end of the day, filling the stadiums is what is key in terms of continuation of development and playing and paying players and so on. Mm -hmm. Our football is not drawing the fans to accommodate that type of league. I don't know. So we are now dependent on multinational companies to pump a lot of money into football. The standard is still low, even though they're pumping that money in. And the fans are not coming out. Football is a success if the stadiums are full. Other than that, football is not a success, no matter what league you're running or what you call it. You call it a professional league, and if there are no fans in the stadium, it is not successful. How we get the fans in the stadium? We get fans in the stadium, and that's what I'm saying. Our Caribbean, in fact, football all over the world is community, not just right in the Caribbean, right? That's why Chelsea is a community. It's a city. Milan is a city, um, right? Madrid is a city, it's community. And therefore, our football teams have to come from community and the players have to basically, that is what is local to us, that our players also came from the community. And because of that, the fans <laughs> came out to see their players that they knew. You could have one or two players coming in, mm -hmm. but we need to reset our system. That's what I'm saying. We cannot continue going down this road of having a Premier League and a 
Ascension League and all these names that we have and expect the only team that was had real big support in that essentially was Raila Hokita because it was a community team and right more right most of the games were played in that area in any case. Point Fortin Civic Center. Huh? Point Fortin Civic Point Fortin Civic Center. But I still don't find Point Fortin Civic Center had the crowd support that I know Point Fortin Civic Center if they win it. had in the past. Because the people in Point is spoiled. If they don't have a winner, they don't come out. Well, how did we do that in the past? We win. Right. And because we had better quality players, mm -hmm. because they had good development. And point 14 players, they always had feeders coming into the new team because you had other minor leagues. You had minor leagues in Tishé. You had minor leagues everywhere else in point. You don't have those things again. And that is why the team is right not having. So you now have to try to get a player from San Fernando. Point never had that problem. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, we have a lot more competition now. Eh? No, but Point populate the colleges league in the South. You probably find a Point player in every school in the Southland. Or few of them. All right, but that's colleges league. Yeah, but I'm saying they still populate the colleges league. So that means if there was more football, there's no SFL that's gone. Correct. Yes. You know, there's SFA. Yes. And that controls the whole of South. Yes. So no, all so of that has to change. All of that has to change and be segmented back into individual communities. Right. And that is what I've always been right promoting on this show mm -hmm. that. It should have a Miara League, it should have a Point League, it should have a San Fernando League, it should have a Diamond League. So, but we have to be fair. We also have way more competition than we had in the past. What do you mean? Cell phones, video games. Children are no longer climbing mango trees, coming out and picking plum, and the entertainment back in our time, the entertainment used to be outdoors. Now children are indoors on their phones and so on. They have no <clears throat> desire to go outside and run on the street. They have So that competition about playing football on a computer versus actually playing football, you'll find more, 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 more uh, technical people <laughs> on the computer playing football versus actually coming outside and doing the real thing. And that competition. And I hear everybody say that, and even sometimes I used to say that. But I say, is, how come it doesn't affect the rest of the world? The rest of the world is, it because has all of the, the... Because it's a culture, Steve. We, okay, in so in August, you will see <clears throat> even coaches from Trinidad going to the U.S., because there is an organized football coaching throughout the United States. So, so right? that shouldn't affect... Correct. But that is what I'm saying. I'm saying that we <clears throat> have to be organized, go back to the communities. Those things used to happen from community football. Mm -hmm. Every holiday, you had coaching in the communities. You had a big camp where all the children used to come out. Now that everything is centralized into this Premier League and the Pro League and they do have any SFL again, and you, that, is the, that is my main point. I think we make excuses for those kids who, who are for our, our downfall, but how come the world is not a downfall in the world? Yeah, but what world? else do they have? Our TTFA has to present those options. Yeah. Right, there has to be organized. Okay. So the kids have nothing else to do. There is no organized no. right training program during the vacation period. Mm -hmm. So what else are they to do? So it's not an excuse for the kids. It is the reality of what is happening based on a poorly organized national football program. Well, yeah, and maybe the way we, we raise our kids now, but we used to go out and cut a space wherever there is grass and make a field. Put bamboo up. But that was our only choice. 
What do you mean it was the only choice? We didn't have the right video games and so on. We had nothing inside to play with. Okay. All our activity was outdoors. So we right that was our choice. But I'm saying the rest yeah. of the world is the same. And the rest of the world is not dropped. I mean the rest of the world has an organized program that gives the kids opportunities to do that. We don't. Okay. Well, and I always say we are like Brazil. And the Brazil football is dropped. Okay, because I guess we we similar to them, they um, jamming still kind of yeah. um, attitude, and and if they really focus on the game, nobody else will win the World Cup. So but the Moroccos and the South Koreas will eventually win, and the Nigerias and the Ghanas will right win eventually. You think uh, um, Asian or African is which one of those will win the World Cup before? I Where think then? Asian more than African. You think so? Yep. Asian quicker than African. So, so it's in the men. Well, again, Asian is strong minded. Correct. The, the, Hard, the, a very dedicated uh, work ethic. All right. Closing. Any, I have one minute left. Closing remarks. Um, I am hopeful that the TTFA takes a very hard look at themselves. Um, not just speak to <clears throat> the present stakeholders of football. They have to understand what was very successful in the past and come up with a hybrid system of how to make football successful now. Um, we can't continue down the same path of rolling along with this league for me, my advice is to go back to ride the zonal football and reset our football. Okay. As usual, thank you for being here. All you always pleasure. come up with these great, great, great ideas and give them suggestions how to do better. Appreciate that. And thank you for being here. Viewers, thank you for tuning in every Tuesday night at 8. And again, NCBN TT, thank you for the opportunity. And we have a Facebook page you can check us out. And we have an email address, steelofdreamstt at gmail.com, where you can drop us a line. This show is in the peace. My name is Steve David. This is Anthony Clark. Good night.